Bridget Bartlett here with Vision Marketing and Design, and today we are live inside of our team training, where we are live Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So today, what I'm going to show you how to do is to create a blog. Now, you may be wondering, why are we looking at this church website? And if you remember, earlier in the week, um, I told you that I was working on a new snapshot for all of my high-level affiliates so that you can, if you have your own ministry that you want to promote, or um, if you are an agency who wants to work with uh, ministries or churches to help them get an online presence, you're going to have this available um, among all the other snapshots that you have. Um, so the reason I wanted to show this today and, you know, because if you have a church, you're creating that content at, at least every Sunday, right? You're doing the sermon. Um, we talked about yesterday creating a YouTube channel for your sermon, but you need to have a place to store those. Okay. Now, obviously you can store it on YouTube and that's great. But the whole goal really is to drive traffic to your website. Okay. When they're on YouTube, there's lots of different, you know, distractions and other things going on down to the side. And you may want to share additional information. You may want to give them the opportunity to serve or join your church or maybe, um, you know, donate or something like that, right? So we definitely want to take those sermons and you can use the YouTube video and just embed it into a um, into your website or you can, you know, use an additional host, okay? So um, what we have available inside of High Level, you know, obviously among all of our many, many tools is a blog builder, okay? So in this example, what I've done is I've actually, um, and this is the website I'm working on, it's definitely not done, but if you click on sermons here, you'll see that we have this blog that I created as an example. And then when you click on the blog, uh, you can go right to the actual sermon. You can share your video. Uh, you can share, you know, the the key points of the blog here. And this is really going to help you drive traffic to your website. Um, also, it is a great way if you're doing paid advertising to get traffic to your website. This is a great way of doing that, right? You could even put the blog in the description of the video on YouTube. There's lots of things that you can do with this blog, but it's a great way of housing all of the sermons that you're creating every single Sunday. You want to have that on your website so that people can, like I said, engage with your, um, your ministry or your business. Okay. So what I'm going to do, um, I want to show you, um, and this is kind of the example that we went over on Monday, but I want to show you what they use here for um, all of their uh, sermons. Okay. So if we click here, you'll see it goes to um, this Vimeo live stream page. Okay. Now that's not very professional. Um, I wouldn't want to be promoting Vimeo and you can even see their menu up here, um, but you can see this is what they chose to do. And then if you click on this sermon, it goes right to that video. Okay. So again, it's not really even inside the website. It's not even um, inside their domain. So they're completely leaving the website to be able to view the sermon. So that's not that great of a solution. Okay. Um, now this other church here, you can see they have a watch here for adults and kids. So if you click on adults, it actually takes you to a, um, a page here, which is watch now. And then they also have down here kind of a, um, kind of similar to a blog really, but at least it's in their main website, right? So if you click here, um, it will show you, you know, the, the different series and then view, and then you'll see, um, it goes to the main video page. Okay. So that's really not that bad of a solution. They also have, you know, where you can listen, you can also listen on Apple or Spotify. And so you can see you have a lot more options when you are maintaining your videos within your own website. Okay. So this one is a much better solution than this example. Okay. So I'm just going to X out of here. I just wanted to show you. And again, you know, when you're doing research on your own website or for a client's website, especially like a niche type of website, you want to make sure that you're doing the research because if all of these churches or businesses, regardless of the niche, um, if they're all doing similar things, um, that probably means that they need that solution, right? So all churches need a place to house all of their sermons and their series that they're working on. It's great advertisement, um, but also 
people just like to know, you know, what was the previous sermon, especially when we had, you know, COVID and we couldn't get into the churches. Uh, this was a very, very crucial part of, you know, keeping that connection with the community. Okay, so um, let's get into the account now. And you can see um, here is the website that I created. I, I did want to give you just a quick little tour here so you guys can see how it's progressing. Um, so you see we talked about the things that need to be in the menu here. So uh, we have our directions, service times. You can see it's very, very simple. Um, they can click here for uh, I'm new, the next step, and then different care resources. I'm going to talk tomorrow about how to use Stripe to create a link where um, people can donate to and choose the amount. Um, but you can click here or you can go up into the menu and then reach the same pages, right? So I'm new. Of course, you want to have a video introducing the church, talk about us and the, you know, different programs that you have. You have your next steps here. Um, these were all typical things. Uh, I want to be baptized and so on. Um, and then uh, you have your, of course, the care options. Uh, where people can choose. And then, of course, about us, um, you can have a form where people can uh, choose to serve. Um, also, the resources here, uh, you can just link out to like a Bible app. I mean, you're a church, right? So um, you may want to provide and, and these are free, right? And all I did was just create an external link to uh, YouVersion, which um, is basically they have the, the Bible and then the Bible app for kids, okay? So that's basically how this is all getting set up. But of course, we're talking today about how to create uh, this blog here, okay? Because you can see it's really nice. Um, it, it really looks great, but it's also a great way to organize those videos. So inside the um, your website builder, you'll see that I created a separate page here. Let me open up the actual, um, the editable version. Okay. So you just want to create a page to house your blog here and you can put, you know, it's just a standard page. The only thing that makes this a blog page is just this element that I put here. Okay. So once you've created your page, you just simply want to click the plus sign and you'll see blog post list here. Okay. So just drag that in. Once you drag that in, you'll see that you have the standard, you have a compact version here. If you, if you like that way better, uh, you can also select your different categories. And remember, this is just the element. Okay. So the blog has to be actually created in the blog builder. And I'm going to show you that, um, in just a second. Okay. So you can choose um, how many um, pages or how many uh, articles, I guess, that you want to show here in the element. You can also optimize the image load. You can change what this says here. So you can see that I changed it to more sermons instead of uh, like more videos or whatever. Um, and then you can, of course, change the button color. Okay, you do have a, a few advanced options here. So you can change the um, spacing. Uh, the border and the shadow of the box here. And then, of course, you can make it visible on desktop or mobile or hide one or the other. Okay, so that's what it looks like here. All right, like I said, just a standard page, just drag in that element. Now, um, let's go back here. I'm going to go ahead and leave that. And let's click here because we need to now create our blog. So since this account does not have a blog yet, um, you can see what we really need to do is just click create blog. Now we're going to give our new blog post a uh, title. So for this example, I'm just going to say Sermon 1 um, because, of course, I don't have a, a blog that I'm writing. This is just for training purposes. And you'll see here that it says the cover image. Okay, so the cover image is what's going to show here. Um, the appropriate image size, it tells you 600 by 400. So what I like to do is go to Canva, um, go here where it says uh, 600 by 400. Or you can just type that in and then you could actually just choose uh, any of the images. OK, now you can add text on the image, but depending on which um, what they're viewing it on, the text may look funky. So I actually don't like to add a lot of text. But, you know, as long as you're strategic with adding text there, you certainly can. So in this example, let's just say a sermon. 
okay? And then now we have a bunch of images that we could use, okay? And of course, you could use your own images. You know, if this is, at, let's say that this was an image from our church and um, I wanted to put that as my image cover, of course I could do that, right? Um, if you don't have images or, you know, maybe you're just getting started or you're creating like a demo website to show clients and um, tell them, hey, this is what we provide. We can edit these things for you and, and so on. Um, you can just use stock images, okay? So like here's a stock image. Uh, maybe you want to use this one here, um, whatever you choose to do. And then, of course, when you download, you just simply go download. You can choose JPEG for a lower quality and a smaller file size, or you can use uh, PNG. Okay, so let's just go ahead and download this. And then what you want to do is um, just upload. So let me let me go to my downloads and let's just say church um, test. Okay, and then what I want to do is just simply upload my image. So you can see when you click upload, it opens up your gallery here, and then you just drag it in here. So I'm just going to double click. Now I have that image there. And here I want to choose the alternate text. Okay, so this is like for SEO. So when someone hovers over the image or for SEO purposes, um, we could put that uh just give it a name here. So we'll just say Sermon 1. And then, of course, here is the post description. Okay, and it says give us a short description for viewers to get a glimpse of the post. It works best between 100 to 250 characters. So let's just say this is a great sermon you need to check out. Okay, and then now we're creating our post. All right, so that's our very first blog post now. And you'll see that you open up in the editor. We have our title up here. Um, you do have the back, um, you know, the undo button or the, the forward button. So if you've made a mistake or something like that, you need to toggle in between your mistakes. This is definitely a great feature here. Um, you have the, you know, the standard editing features here. Like you can make the text bold, italicize, underline, put a strike through. You do have... Um, almost 1,500 different fonts that you can store in here. You can also add your own custom fonts. You can change the uh, size of the fonts. You can change the style of the font. So if it's a heading um, one or two, and this is, uh, you know, for SEO purposes, you can also, of course, align the text to the left, middle, the right, or you can justify it. And then you can indent um, or outdent for um, the spacing of your um text. You also have uh, this option here. So this is the space um, above above the text. So the, like the line spacing. And then of course you have bullet points and the numbers, you know, typical um, typical editing for documents, right? Highlighting the text. You can insert a link. A lot of people ask me how to monetize blogs and inserting a link is the best way. So if you are writing an article about, um, you know, about downloading a Bible app and you want to put a link to a Bible app that you're an affiliate of, that's an excellent way of, you know, monetizing in many different ways um, your content that you're creating. I mean, what what we need to do, and, and a lot of people think it's kind of bad to look at a church as a business, but it is a business. I mean, you have employees, you have expenses, you know, if you have the building, you have electricity. I mean, it takes money to to have a church. And so the more ways that you can monetize in ways like affiliate marketing, that's the less money that you have to use for donations. And that's also more money that allows you to go out into the community and, you know, and serve the people, right? So um, definitely all you would have to do is if this was the link to the Bible app, I could say download here and then add my affiliate link. Okay, so really, really simple. Um, you also can, of course, insert images. You can insert audio, which is really cool. You can insert video. Uh, and of course, that's what we would want to do if we are putting our sermons here. Um, and of course, you can add um, quotations here, uh, insert emojis, insert dividers. You can add custom code. Um, and then also you have the format, all the content selected. And then you even have the ability to use the content AI to write the blog for you. Okay. Now, another thing when you're adding your sermons or your YouTube videos, um, you can take that 
uh, the transcript of the video. And there are lots of extensions. Uh, YouTube summary is one of them where it will extract the um, transcript from the YouTube video. And then you could have your video here and then just type out, you know, of course, make it look pretty. Just type out the transcript and make sure that you have all of the bullet points. Okay. And I'm not going to go into great detail about, you know, how to create this because it's just standard text, right? So if I wanted to, what I would want to do is just completely delete all of this and start over again. But you can see how nice the blog builder, um, it actually looks, how you can add the bullet points here. And then of course, like this video here, you just extract from your YouTube, okay? So if I wanted to um, change this video or I wanted to add the video, first you can insert it from your media library or you can use the YouTube video. Now, there are pros and cons to using the, um, the video that you're gonna upload to the library or YouTube. If your channel's monetized and you want to earn additional ad spend, of course, that's great to have YouTube on here because when they're viewing your video, um, you're earning ad spend. You're increasing your watch time and, and all of that, right? You're also potentially um, gaining subscribers to your YouTube channel. The downfall is, though, when the YouTube video is playing here, um, you also have, you know, ads running through here, which may be distracting. Um, you also will have, when the video's over, you'll have these little pop-up videos here that suggest other videos that may not be yours. So now you're taking traffic off of your website um, to you know, because it's hosted on YouTube. Another thing about, you know, a downfall to YouTube is let's just say that, um, you know, you do something that goes against their terms of service and they decide to just shut your channel down. Well, now every single blog that you have created is going to be, um, you know, it's, it's going to say video not available. Okay. That's happened to me. Um, it's happened to many, many people, uh, for reasons unknown. <laughs> so, um, it's kind of risky. So you definitely have to weigh the pros and cons. Um, if you need a good video host, um, like I said, you can use from the gallery here or your media gallery. So if I click here, you'll see that it opens up our media gallery here. Okay, so you can just upload the actual file to the video and then use that. Um, you could also use the embed option. So I like to use uh, Streamable. Streamable is a very inexpensive um, streaming option our um, video hosting option, it is the definitely the least expensive that I have found. I think it was like a hundred bucks for two terabytes of, um, of storage for your videos. And you can see like you can just paste the YouTube video URL here and um, you can choose, you, you have some basic editing, right? But you also have the analytics here so you can tell maybe which videos are the most popular. Maybe you wanna add those to like a featured area on your website. You can also edit the thumbnail. The thumbnail is what's showing here right now. So if I wanted to edit this for any spot in the video, I could choose, just move this over, choose whatever I want to show um, when they're looking at the video. And of course I would just save it there, right? And you can also, uh, just going back there, you could also upload your YouTube thumbnail if you wanna do that, okay? So you definitely, um, lots of options there. And then if I wanted to embed this video, I could just simply click embed here and then grab this, this, uh, code and then I want to go back to my website and I wouldn't choose the video option. What I would choose is this option here. So I'm going to insert custom code and I can paste that there. And then now I have my video. Okay. So um, I can, let's see, let's preview this, preview the post. Um, you have unsaved changes. So let's go ahead and save and let's click up here to preview. And then you see our image there, and then you see we have our video here. Okay, so um, it actually, and then you see here's our image. All right, and then you'll also see the the title. Um, one thing you definitely want to do as well is um, check the mobile view. Okay, you can toggle in between both of them, and you just want to make sure like this image looks a little funky because it's uh, on mobile view. So that may be something that you want to resize. Like this looks like a great size for desktop. Uh, and for mobile. 
So you would definitely maybe want to change that. But you can also see why the words on the image sometimes don't really work out as great as you think it would. Um, so those are definitely things to consider. Okay, and if you scroll down here, you see our video again. I do love these checklists because if there is something, um, you know, like an instructional or an onboarding list or something like that that you're creating, it is really cool that, you know, the viewer of the blog can go through and check these um, themselves. So it's really, it's really a great blog builder. Okay, so let's go back here now. Um, when you, um, if you want to duplicate the post, which you probably will a lot, because once you get a really good uh, format, this won't take nearly as long, right? You'll you'll kind of just be duplicating each post and just changing out the video and stuff, but you're, you'll kind of create like a template for yourself from the first one. And then that way it remains congruent with all of your other posts, okay? Um, and then you have, uh, of course, preview posts. You can see uh, the, pre the version history. And then of course you can always delete. Now, once you've created your post and you've gotten it how you want it to be, you can click continue. And then you have the, um, the slug here. Now the slug is what's going to be, uh, and it gives you an example here. So whatever URL your website is and the, your blog is connected to, it will have the tail end here is going to be your slug. So if this was called, um, you know, the, the book of Genesis or something, uh, then we could put the book of Genesis here and then it would be like the christianvision.com forward slash the book of Genesis. All right. Um, you also have the ability to add categories. So if you are maybe working on a series like we just saw on the other website where they had, you know, multiple um, sermons that they had built into a series, you may want to create a category for that. And that way, you know, whoever's viewing that they can see. So let's just say, um, sermon, sermon series one. And of course you want to upload your image and you'll see here recommended image size is um, 512 by 512 and no bigger than 10 megabytes. So again, what we would want to do is go to our friend Canva and let's actually just resize. If you're Canva Pro, which I highly recommend, um, you can just easily resize. Um, so let's just say 512 by 512 and it doesn't have to be exactly that it's just telling you like the recommended size um just make sure that the it's not um that large of a file okay it's just saying that's the recommended size so you definitely want to play around with that but let's go ahead and just um resize here and so now you see that we have this here so we can just make this image the size that we want course we want to make sure to get that Bible in there and then we're going to download our image so once we have downloaded the image um, we can just say church test one and we're going to go back here and of course we can click change and you'll see again we have uh, it opens up our gallery so we're just going to drag that in there and let's double click and now we have our image size here Okay, let's add um, alternate text again. So we're gonna say sermon series one. And then we have um, our category slug. So the category slug, since the actual post is the sermon uh, dash one, um, this may be a sermon series, series one, okay. And then of course we can give a description um, of our category. So this would be, um, this series is, um, or how about this series is all about sermon one. Okay, and then create. So now we have created our category. Once you create all of your categories, you'll be able to see them from the drop down list, which one you want to choose. All right. So choose that. You can also choose several categories as well. Like you can see if we had multiple categories, let's go ahead and uh, do sermon series two, because maybe this video is relevant to whatever that topic is. And of course, uh, we have our um, our second category slug. So maybe we want this to be sermon series two and then we could add the category description this is all about sermon series two and then of course we want to add our image here let's just go ahead and use the 
actually let's get in here let's use this one and then um oops let's see sermon series two okay and uh so once you have created that and you'll see oh looks like i have multiple so there we go now you can see that you can choose two okay now here you want to add keywords you know that's obvious for um you know seo purposes so if this was about um a sermon okay now of course that's so generic right we would really like i said using the example like the book of genesis or something maybe we want to type in genesis that's the keyword here and of course you have you can have multiple keywords so maybe we want to use um bible maybe we want to use sermon maybe you want to use you know maybe you talk about uh you're relating a story of anxiety or something like that to maybe that's like the 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 summary of the sermon so then you could add in anxiety and then when people are looking for you know christian advice on how to deal with anxiety they can find your blog article okay now you also have the author here uh you may want the author to be uh the church or you may want it to be the pastor who um, preached the sermon okay so let's say this is pastor philip because philip's in our group and he is a pastor and we could put philip's picture here let's just say this is philip um and let's say um this is going to be uh philip and we could add some about philip this is philip best pastor in the in the world philip is the best pastor in the world apparently and then we could add philip or the business um uh, urls for social media okay so let's go ahead and just click create author now we have added an author and we need to choose which author is um, the author of this blog article now you can save as draft one of the things that i love to do when i am scheduling out my lives which that's what you would be doing if you um you know every sunday you have a sermon um you could prep prepare all of this ahead of time and save it as a draft, right? And then that way on Sunday, all you have to do is just publish the draft. You could even schedule and publish and then you don't have to come back later on and do it again. Now, what's cool when you're using um, YouTube and Restream, it creates those events. And I have lots of training um, in the training that you can um, the checkout in the knowledge base about how to um, prepare and plan your live streaming strategy. But once you create that on YouTube, then you can just add that event to your blog. You can create the whole outline of what you're going to discuss and then just schedule and post this. And then it will post at the appropriate time. For example, maybe, um, you know, maybe you want to post this when you're having your service at, you know, usually it's like nine in the morning. So you just want to scroll down here. Let's just choose nine in the morning and then um, you schedule it out like that and confirm okay now just for this training here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear this out and then just do uh, we're gonna do publish now okay because if you did do this you know Sunday afternoon and you want to publish your blog so that everyone can check out the sermon in case they missed it you could just choose now and then save okay so now we have our one published blog all right now what you can do like i was saying is you can just duplicate these and this is what i'm going to do um, so that we can see on our website what it actually looks like here so now i'm going to go in and edit because we need to publish this so i'm going to click continue i'm just going to leave all of this how it is and we're going to say now and save and let's go and duplicate. So again, you can see how easy this is. Once you get the first one set up, all you need to do is duplicate, just make these simple edits. You probably won't even have to change like the author or any of those things. Um, and uh, so now we're just gonna save and then we're gonna go to continue and we're going to publish and we're gonna say now. And now we have three blog articles. OK, now, once you have those three, we can go back to our website, go back to the blog page and we can um, open this up. And you'll see our blog articles. Let's actually go in here. OK, 
Okay, so now we have um, our categories. Let's say all posts and then save and then let's preview. So now you see our um, published blog posts. So then when you click there, you'll see that when it opens up the article, it stays within the same post. Okay. So this is what it looks like. We still have this nice white box, which of course you can change a lot of those. And then you'll see, you know, Pastor Philip down here and it would have his social media uh, links and all of that. So again, that's another way of driving traffic to your church. And, you know, one of the best things and what we need to know, you know, as church followers is uh, we want to know our pastor, you know, do we trust the message that he's sending? And it's the same with any business, right? Do you trust that business? Um, we can get to know and like and trust the business owner by following them on social media, right? So maybe if you're looking for a new church, or you're looking for a great business to partner with or whatever it is that you're looking for, um, following on social media and kind of getting a feel of them will pretty much give you the answers that you're looking for. Now, there is another part to this um, blog here, and you'll see if we go up here into the little gearbox, you'll see here you can add, you know, multiple authors if you want to. You may have, you know, maybe a, a guest speaker or something like that, and you want him to be the author or her, um, you can add the author there and then, you know, customize per that blog post. You can also um, update or edit any of your categories here. And what's really cool is once you connect a domain, you'll get the link to your RSS feed. Um, we don't have a domain connected here, but you'll get a link to your RSS feed, and then that will allow um, you to even send out automated blog posts. Okay. So you go RSS feed, get your link, then you can go into the emails here and choose, let's go into uh, templates and you can create an email template and then you will see the RSS headers and items. Okay. So if you want every single time that you publish a new blog, if you want that to be sent out to your list, you can set that up here. Okay. Because we have that RSS option. All right. So um, that is the um, all the tips and tricks on creating a blog. Definitely um, keep an eye out. Next week, we're going to talk about, you know, how agencies can position the snapshot that we're creating so that you can, you know, reach out to churches and provide this as a solution for them. OK, so um, and then tomorrow we're going to talk about, like I said, uh, creating a donate leak on Stripe so that you can add that to your website as well, because people, if they love your mission, and your uh, message, they definitely want to help in some way. So we, you know, some people want to serve with their time. Some people want to serve with their money. Um, so we want to give everyone that capability of doing that. So thank you all so, so much for joining me. I will see you all tomorrow. Same time, same place. Go make